Hello, DFS. We are continuing our conversation. Today we'll talk about to be a widow doesn't mean to be alone, to be lonely. And I want to introduce you my friend, Mary Ann, Dr. Mary Ann Rogoff, uh, who I have been known for a bit of years. Uh, one of our friends introduced us. Mary Ann is known to be a published author of two books. First book, which I uh, read and really changed my life, it was The Silver's Life. And second, newly published book, Love is Blind in One Eye. Let me introduce Mary Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our site, uh, I'm the author of a project living my life. And as usual, I invite to join us and those who lost, lost their wives, husbands, loved friends, and our friends who want to help us. Mary Ann, I would ask, uh, I would like to ask you a few questions, and I make a list of my questions because I'm learning how to do interview. Well, um, I know uh, you also had uh, some uh, loss, some death in your family, and can you tell us about this? And mainly, uh, I would like to you to share with uh, our people. Um, the moment when you felt you had enough energy to uh, go back to your life, when you felt joy and how to, and what did you do uh, is it your steps? I think, I think I've had a, a number of losses throughout my life, so none of it uh, was shocking when it happens again in adulthood. I, I lost my brother drowned when I was a child. Uh, grandmother lived with us and she died and uh, I worked in nursing homes for a long time, uh, you know, helping uh, old folks uh, move on their way. Uh, in 1988, I uh, gave birth to a daughter uh, who was severely brain damaged and I was told uh, she wasn't going to live uh, more than a couple of days. And um, my book, Sylvie's Life, is the story of my experience with her because she lived much longer than, uh, than a few days. Uh, and um, after she died, um, I had to go on with my life somehow. Uh, before this event happened, I was already a writer. Uh, I do use writing as a method of uh, understanding. I think I started that when my brother drowned when I was a kid. And uh, I find it a very useful way to ask my questions of the page. And the page just quietly listens and doesn't critique what I have to say, so I can say anything at all. So it's an uncensored, free space to express your feelings. I think anyone who's grieving the idea of moving on is a beautiful idea. I think uh, we move on by moving through, not by moving, leaping over or trying to sneak around it. I think we have to allow ourselves to feel our feelings for as long as we need to. And uh, so I never would, uh, you know, tell anyone, you know, get over it, you know, let it go, move on. I think, I think really staying with it and. Um, allowing it to be, you know, so the answer to, you know, how long does it take, you know, it's many years now since then, and it still sneaks up on me, you know, on certain dates of the year, and, uh, you know, I just, I know it's coming sometimes, and I just allow it to be there. I actually ritually set aside time to grieve when I when I had to go back to work. Uh, I would I would grieve, you know, I, I set a clock to you know to grieve before I had to go and pretend I was fine when I really wasn't. Uh, but you know, I think everyone does it differently and, and I think we have to respect each other's ways of Feeling. And in previous vid uh, videos, I also discussed uh, this issue that grieving is very individual. There is no answer how long it will take for each of us to go through grieving process. Just accept yourself, allow yourself to be yourself and feel what you need this morning. I've been teaching a, uh, a course called Grief Writing. Uh, it's a five-week course through community education at College of Marin. And, uh, you know, we start with um, 
taking an inventory of our bodies. How are we holding grief in our bodies? And so, you know, when we can figure out how to release the symptoms physically, I think that's a good first step to like acknowledge when you're holding your neck. And or what are symptoms? Tension? Tension, tension in your muscle posture? Mm -hmm. There, are, there's some beautiful writing about it. There's a great book by um, C.S. Lewis called *The Grief Observed*, where uh, he has a beautiful quote about, um, uh, you know, uh, the metaphors for how it feels. So it's like, it's like a, uh, you know, I'm wrapped in gauze. It's like a, I'm under a blanket. And so when you can name a metaphor or a concrete image for how it feels, then you can say, okay, how do I release this symptom? You know, so how do I? So say I have a knot in my stomach. How do I untie the knot? Right, my heart is broken. How do I sew my heart back together? My, uh, I have a lump in my throat. How do I dissolve the lump? So you know, literally to dissolve it by tea with honey, or you know, uh, you know, just deep breathing kinds of exercises. So physical. Attending to our physical health is just as important as we it's our mental health. So you are saying that uh, grieving is uh, also uh, sadness, depression, but it also affects our body, the tension of our body. Very much. And to get out of this grieving uh, tension, it's important to listen to yourself, to identify all these tensions first and work on them. Yes. And the joy part, I also have a course called Joy Writing, the sequel. How do we find a way back to joy after grief? And um, you know, where can what can we do physically? You know, how do we so you know if you, if you used to like to dance before this terrible thing happened, can you find your way back to just dancing in the living room by yourself before you try, you know, doing it in public and feeling like you're faking it, right? So you know, any any kind of uh, you know physical pleasure, swimming, walking. Uh, you know, just being in nature, uh, you know, yoga, all of, all of those um, you know, physical parts are just as important as therapy, other kinds of therapy. Very nice. Uh, in my previous uh, video, I talked about my love to art and to discover an art for me and trying to paint. And actually today with Mary Anne, we meet and only an art event. Yes. So all this art, all exercise, dancing, they bring us together and bring us to you. What would you recommend uh, people who are listening to us? How to feel better? How to find the joy? Uh, feel your feelings. Uh, don't deny them. Um, talk to people when you're ready, uh, listen, um, you know, find one small thing that, that, eases, that, that, that eases the pain, right? Uh, in the beginning, uh, after my daughter's death, I, was, I really was not up for even beautiful gardens or flowers or uh, music like it, it, it like the, the first thing i did was like i found this very bland park because <laughs> there were no flowers it was kind of an ugly picnic table but it was a place like next to a, a, a kind of a plain looking tree where i could just sit and be calm and and you know just 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 be with whatever i was feeling and you know you could just you just do it a step at a time and it's forward and back and you know, give yourself the grace to uh, you know to to you know to go back when you need to, and and remember, like, don't try to forget. You know, uh, remembering, I, I find is is healing. Also, you know, and like, if you want to talk to your friends who are grieving, you know, don't go in and try to talk about anything but the thing that happened. To actually say, let's talk about your husband or your you know, your loved child. Yeah, and, and talking about it, just remembering them is, is a lovely thing. It's a lot. So uh, grieving, it's a process, and it's uh, important to make a step forward. And it's okay sometimes to step back, but then go forward again in your process. Go back to people, meet your uh, friends, find the new friends. Life is continuing. Life is beautiful. Uh, thank you very much. I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel and please put your likes. It's very important for me to know your opinion. And we'll continue next time. And thank you, Mary Ann, for your time. Thank you for joining us.